Hey yo, Neil. Hey, what's up? I got you. Got you, man. R.P. Grammy. Free my brother. It's free to his backwards. All right, welcome to another day uh, here uh, in uh, Las Vegas as we getting ready for the. Uh, Another day, the final day of the Maui Invitational on the road with RSG at the Maui Invitational. This has been uh, a great week of events, a lot going on. We also want to make sure that uh, we thank our sponsors, our premier sponsors, Bowman Medical Group, offering comprehensive services to adults, adolescents, and couples all under one roof. Go to BowmanMedicalGroup.com to learn more about their services and Mind Match Development Group building neighborhoods, supporting people, growing potential. We create interconnected communities. Go to mindmatchdevelopmentgroup.com to learn more about how they're changing communities. Uh, this is great. You know, we're going to, uh, like we did, uh, um, you know, uh, yesterday we want to get in our opening segment uh, 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 brought to us by uh, Red uh, Insurance Group. I uh, had a chance to talk to the the president, uh, Maurice Red, earlier this morning, we'll be dropping a video with him. And so thank you again uh, for all your support of, of our trip. But just want to start out with both of you. I'll, I'll start with you, Joy. Just overall kind of um, uh, um, thoughts about, you know, day two. You know, you know that day two is that, that, that hump day uh, where we learned a lot about teens. What, what are your overall thoughts? Well, all of my predictions went in the gutter. That's what happened to me. <laughs> Johnny Davis killed all my predictions. <laughs> uh, St. Mary's knocked out Oregon, knocked him out so bad. Dana Altman said, I ain't doing no presser after the game. They still looking for him. Send out an APB. We, we, got, we in Vegas, we can, we can get CSI. <laughs> Call Grissom. He, he is MIA. <laughs> CSI need to look for the MIA. <laughs> he was out, out, Ooh. not showing up at all. Did show up for the presser, boy. That's something else. Darnell, what were your overall uh, overall uh, views of day two? I think we learned some things. Um, just like Joy, some of my predictions did not go as planned. I mean, um, <laughs> we, had, um, we had Houston. Um, they came out flat. I know we talked in the press conference. We talked. We we asked them, but um, you know how do how do you move forward after this game? And you know, put this game behind. Put this game behind us and make sure um, you know um, we're not feeling ourselves after this last game. And they 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 gave the right answers, but you know, like they always say, actions speak louder than words. And the actions, it's it's. It seemed like they came out. They came out. They didn't. They didn't have the same energy. They didn't didn't have the same intensity in the first half of the Wisconsin game as they did in the first half against um, Butler. But shoot, um, in the second half they came and brought it. I mean, and they showed what they can do. But it was, it's just too little, too late. You can't let yourself get in that big of a hole. But yeah, we learned. We learned some things like the St. Mary's. Uh, one thing. One thing we learned from this, I think, the general messaging as a whole is the value of experience, the value of having um, older veteran players on your team that, you know, that have been playing the game for a long time. They just have, you know, they have more layers to their to their, to the game, and they just know how to play within themselves and within the system. That yeah, is true because hey, they were saying, you know, a lot of the young teams – um, they still trying to figure stuff out. But St. Mary's been together forever and then some. So they know what their expectations are. That's why they've been pretty solid. But all of these other teams got young kids or new people coming in. So they're still trying to figure it out. Uh, what was that? Mike Bray, he's still trying to figure out playing time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, yeah, you're hitting on a lot of good points. And um I think the veteran part, when you're in a tournament like this or when you have quick turnaround, when you can have players who just know what to do, it allows you to compress uh, preparation time. Um, 
when you're still teaching and developing, you just don't have that much time to correct it. And you got to hope that whatever you tell them sticks. Um, and so you just got to get back to the basics. You got to get back to just playing fundamentals because um, you can't do you know, much. You know, in opening game, we saw, you know, Texas A&M uh, and, and Butler. And, and the big question for us in that game was, I mean, A&M, we knew A&M had some players and they were playing and, um, you know, just had a first, you know, tough first day. But we had to figure out whether or not Butler was going to battle. And early on, Butler uh, sh- struggled a little bit, but then came down the stretch starting to put it together, um, you know, uh, late in the game. Uh, I'll go to you, Darnell, then go to you, Joy. You know, uh, you, when you looked at Texas A&M Butler, you and I were sitting there looking at that game. Um, you know, if, if you're if – you're, if you're, the coaching staff with Butler, what do you take away from that game trying to get into this this, this third day? I mean, they started the game off um, faster than they did um, yesterday. I mean, well, two days ago now. But, um, yeah, the, but um, that being said, their, um, their, their first half of the first game, was it's, just, it's not typical. So sometimes you, you heard a regression to the mean. I think um, this is a more of a progression to the mean. But, um, yeah, they um, – I think there are some things you can take away. Like, um, you you could say that they've made some steps, but um, then again, the second half. I mean, hey, but um, yeah, that's a that's yeah, a little yeah, tough because that's the team is going down 0-2, and yep. you don't you you gotta you gotta really push. You know how how can we salvage this thing and. Mm-hmm get a win before we get out of here because nobody wants to go into a tournament and leave all three, but somebody has to do it. And, yeah. and we'll get more into that as we start to really analyze day three. I think you're on to something. Joy, what do you, when you're looking at uh, Texas A&M and Butler, you know, and that, that matchup yesterday, you know, Texas A&M went in 57-50 over Butler. Uh, what did you draw from watching that game? Well, like Darnell said, um, Butler came out better, but, um, you know, they – they just they, they they need to find themselves, you know. Even even their coach and and actually that's kind of the theme of this tournament. There's two. Mm-hmm. One is the consistent the consistency of every team's play. Mm-hmm. There's two tails in in almost every game. It, that's kind of been the theme, you know, where somebody getting shot in the mouth mm-hmm. straight off the bat, and they dig their hole so bad they can't come up. Mm-hmm. But um, the theme the second theme was that coaches are saying. We telling them what to do. They just not executing. Mm. And you can only tell them what to do. You can't play for them. Mm. So, you know, Lavelle Jordan was, he was, honestly, I swear to God, I thought he was about to cry. He was <laughs> so upset. He, I mean, his his eyes were getting watery when he was talking. And he is just so dismayed with how his team has been performing. Yeah, they came out better against Texas A&M, but they got to dig deep. You yeah. know, first first day was energy. Second day was a little better day, but, but ooh. And another thing I want to add to that is um, one thing they but that one thing that Butler really struggled with was um, turning the ball over. And the game yeah. like this, where um, you really, you know, Texas A&M they want to win the game just as much as we do. And it's a game that was um, it was it was pretty close, but um, but. Every possession matters. So like when you're trying to win these games, when you're trying to win these type of games, every possession matters. When you turn the ball over like that against a team that um, likes to pressure, a team likes to extend and um, track, um, and play in that zone, like, um, but like, like, um, like we like we've been talking about um, when you when you're still trying to figure stuff out, like you, that, that was the stuff you just have to work out, you know finding the soft spots and zones and stuff like that and um, trying to figure out where the outlet is and stuff like that, stuff things of that nature. And, and, and maybe, the, you know, the, the marquee matchup was uh, Wisconsin-Houston. And, I, you know, I said yesterday, you know, this Wisconsin game is going to be interesting because this is a team that's going to match the physicality. The question was, was Wisconsin going to get the – finally find a way to get the balance in the offense? And, you know, and, you know Johnny Davis coming back, you know, after a couple of games having been, you know, hurt, you know, are we going to see, this is a guy I said had first round talent. 
And I think yes, yesterday America found out why we were saying he had first round talent. Um, he, I, I think they're still trying to figure out how to stop him. Um, and, uh, you know, having a wing player like that, a player that can play it on both ends, a three and D guy, um, he gets after it, you know, um, you know, player of the year in Wisconsin high school from lacrosse, his twin brothers on the team as well. Um, it's just, um, Interesting to see this team, given what guard has been going through over the past couple of years with the program, they finally find it feels like they're stabilizing a little bit. And you got Houston. I call them they're the junkyard dogs of, of of college basketball. Like these are some real, some real gritty. These these some these are a bunch of PJ Tuckers on the squad. <laughs> you know they got a bunch of PJ Tuckers on that squad. Um, and it was just interesting. I think they were a little stunned, and, and still I think Kelvin uh, Sampson was stunned <laughs> in the presser. Trying to figure out how did Wisconsin beat us, um, Joy. Well, uh, Johnny Davis well, beat them. Johnny Davis beat them. It was the Johnny Davis show. Come on, man. He had a first half that people wish they had the whole game. He had eighteen at the half. Four. Um, he was four out of five of threes. He was seven for eleven. He had two steals, two blocks, two rebounds in the first half. Yeah, he played. He played. He played well, but it's it's it's, it's a lot more that goes into it than that. But um, yeah, I mean, um, it's his team that allows him to play like that. Yes, he yes. can't do it by himself. However, yeah. it was the Johnny Davis show. You can't you can't deny that. I mean, he even left. in the second half, he was the best time, player on the floor. <laughs> you know, yeah, he, every he, time he was the best, he was the best uh, player on the floor. But um, at towards the end of the game, he 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 got more aggressive and started um. Um, picking up towards the end of the second half, but at the beginning of the second half, he wasn't doing that. Um, uh, I think the biggest reason yeah, why you know, uh, he wasn't doing that because they were like uh, because the defensive uh, pressure was like we, we put two or three on this kid. We gonna make sure he ain't gonna beat us. The, I'm trying to he tell. I'm trying to tell you the difference in the game. The difference in the game was the um, the defensive intensity was not there in the first half. Like like they weren't playing the way Houston played, right? But then the second half, coach got coach got on him. And then they started, and then then they picked up the intensity, and they started extending that pressure, and then um, they, they were able to, you know, fight back into the game, just like Kel- but every just time like they Coach made Sampson a run, said, just Johnny like Coach did Sampson something. said, just like Coach Sampson said in the press conference, it's a tale of two halves. Um, Wisconsin was better by twenty points in the first half. Houston was better by eighteen points in the second half. I mean, it, 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 that was the way. That's pretty much how how it went down. But I, I think if you nuance it even more, though, what give Houston, give, gave Houston trouble is what typically gives people trouble against Wisconsin when they're good, is they don't realize how, realize how good their bigs are. And you can't – I think the reason why Houston can get away, you and I talked about this, they have the ability to scramble and trap because they can leave somebody open as well. And you can't leave those bigs from Wisconsin open. Those young guys are right. getting a savvy. They know how to pass, how to doubles. And – that's what Wisconsin historically has given teams problems is because they have bigs who can, who are good with handling the ball. They, they're, they're okay with the ball. They can shoot um, and they can post. And so you just can't leave them. And I think, and they rebound. And so it's one of those things where some of the things they could get away with defensively, they can't quite get away with Wisconsin. And so, and then you got uh, Brad Davis, that we, uh, Davis, that we, that you can't get a, I mean, comes to the sidelines, middle of timeout they're putting a a, a note a, a gauze in his nose and he's he's asking like what they what, what did they call a foul and he runs back out there i mean he, he's leading them in rebounding so th- there's a toughness and a grittiness in a heavyweight fight you always gonna have a run it wasn't like houston was gonna lay down but i think they realized that th- th- they couldn't get away with the stuff they normally can get away with with, with wisconsin and those bigs qu- kind of are coming into their own the way they weren't coming in the, the, the game before. Joy, I think you were trying to jump in and say something. I jumped in here. Well, I, I, I forgot. But anyway, it, yeah. it does, you know, accentuate um, Darnell's point. It's not only yeah. Johnny, you yes. know, because he can't do what he do unless he got that supporting cast. And, but he does have that supporting cast because if it's not him, it's them. Yeah. And, you know, even though he kind of cooled off in the second half, he still had double digits in the second half and a whole bunch of other stuff. Every yeah. time he used to made a run, Johnny was there to put a stop to it. A steal, yeah. a rebound, a basket, whatever. Um, I, I've, been, like, I've been most impressed with what you're saying on his defensive side of the ball, which I think people aren't seeing. Like, he's picking up 
really tough guys. Now, 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 Sasser is a, a bucket waiting to happen. Like, you know, and even, <laughs> you know, uh, coach was like, you know, they had to try to find him and they lost him. Like he, he's the, the one thing that's going to hurt him is he doesn't look to pass. And a good, get, a good teams, when they can realize you're not going to get the ball up, that can hurt you down the stretch against really good teams. Because at a certain point, he's got to add more assist in his game to open the game up a little more. Because when he's turning the corner, it's almost like you know he's going to go. And you can become a little bit more predictable. And I, I can see that as they get into the Elite Eight, they're going to make a run. But I, I think if they fall, it's, it's noticing those patterns that they're going to have to correct right now. A little bit more balance. Wow, we got to get – St. Mary's, the OGs of the game. <laughs> they coming in. They got my man Tommy at point guard from walk on a star controlling it. Uh, uh, they got they got they got their own six uh, uh, six person coming off the bench. Um, uh, uh, I'll go to you, Darnell, because uh, uh, you I know you asked a couple questions there with Saint uh, Saint Mary's in uh, uh, in, in, in Oregon. Uh, you know what 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 are you thinking about that one? Well, but man, St. Mary's, they, they're a team that they play well together. It's a team that they're a unit. Like, we talk about experience. Uh, they have a lot of experience. They got experience together as well. Like you said, um, Tommy, the, um, they call him Grandpa for a reason. He's been there for a long time. He started off with a walk, he off with a walk on. He kept, he kept making timely, timely buckets. Like, he was, um, he was always making the right play at the right time. He would play with poise. Um, and that's something that's um, very important playing against a team like Oregon that um, they press a lot. Um, they started extending it out more um, towards the end, but like usually they do that like a little soft press, but now they're pressing. But um, but yeah, they they did a good job of handling that. And um, on top of that, you got Daniel Foto, of course, off the bench. He's been great this whole tournament. Um, he he is a problem in the paint. And uh, one question I was going to ask Dana Altman is if when you have a post player like that, that that has it going like Fotu had it, like um, what kind of adjustments can you make, or where should you, you know, what do you do? <laughs> but, Guess yeah, what? He, he ain't got no like, answers. That's why he didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> he would have said, "If I knew." I would have made that adjustment. <laughs> oh, uh, Joy be in it. Joy be holding down in the presser for us in RSG. She gets all the mix on what's going on in there. Uh, what, what do you feel as well, Joy? I know you were you, you've been watching and you be there. Um, you know uh, that that was a great game, and you know it was just you know it was a tough tough teams, but St. Mary's has just got something. And that conference is making noise. Well, I was looking at the stats, and what was blowing my mind was their um, shooting percentage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they finished the game with 52%. And um, even their first half was like, I wrote it down somewhere. But it, it was it was so high, I was like, what the hell is going on? And the day before that, you know, there was first half was 46 um, second half, 52, or oh, here it is. First half, 41%. Second half, 59%. The shooting percentage for three-point is like 71%. You know, I was like, damn, like, how are they so efficient? So that was my well, a lot question. Of that is, uh, but a lot of that is they, they, have, they have a lot of good ball movement, a lot of good player movement. And like I said earlier, they trust each other. Like, um, when, when, when the ball, like, people, like, coaches ever since the beginning of the time, they were saying um, the ball moves faster than a um, the ball moves faster than a man every time. So if the ball is moving, um, you're gonna you're gonna get more um, more open shots and you know just better looks at it. And just like uh, my, my guy said in the um, in the press conference, they take they they they're very good at shot selection. They take smart shots. Exactly. Um, that was and, good at. Yeah, they take and that goes back to the experience. These guys have played the game for a long time. They understand how to play, and they they don't jack up on um, bad shots. Yeah, I mean, Joy, you asked him that question. And that was a really good question because I don't think players get asked a lot of questions around the shooting percentage. What do you do? And the best part of the answer was when they said, "We pay attention to our shot selection. When we're not taking, we try to just make sure we're taking better shots." And that was such a nuanced answer that that. 
that would come from a veteran squad, right? It's it like it, it felt like they were giving me a little seminar response. It was a really good response that most people don't take out, and most people don't pay attention. Like we shoot better because we pay attention to not taking bad shots. And yeah, I think if you look at some of these other teams, like Butler, I think part of the problem is that they don't. There's you don't understand who what they're trying to do and who they're trying to get it to. You watch St. Mary's, you watch Wisconsin, you watch Houston, you know who you know who they're trying to get and where people are supposed to be. Everybody has roles. I think that was one of the coaches said. It's clear with these teams. Everybody knows and you know where to get people to ball and people know where to get their shots. And St. Mary's Oh, I know what I know what Butler's trying to do. Butler, they trying to they trying to set screens and shoot threes. But that ain't gonna win. That's that's a coach who's coaching for a shot. They live and they die by the three, and this tournament they've been dying by the three. But even with the three, uh, but exactly, I don't go, go, think it's go, go. just the threes because yeah. they they couldn't even get into rhythm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, I don't even think like like um, Devon was saying they don't even know who they are. I, I don't even think they're there yet because they don't know who they are. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's a prime example. Texas A and M put a little bit of three court pressure. I know Darnell, you were talking about that, trying to get them to um, work down the clock, and they knew they were going to panic. And they just didn't know how to get the movement and where to get the shot. You watch Houston play. You watch Wisconsin play. You watch St. Mary's play. Even with that going on, they get the shot they want. And But that's because people know where to shoot. They know where to get on the floor. And it's it's interesting with that St. Mary's response that they had that. So this is – it was – I mean, that's those are the good things uh, uh, that, that are important to talk about. All right, so then we got the nightcap. Shamanah didn't surprise anybody. You know, I was saying day two is that Shamanah day. You got to watch out. You know, people licking their wounds. They come in, and they was hanging with Notre Dame in that first half, and then the Fighting Irish and uh, Coach Bray was just like, forget this. We ain't having it. And they end up taking them out 90-64. Shamanah kind of played out of character a little bit, trying to play the pace and, you know, play as though they had the comparable athletes. Uh, Joy, when you – I know you were uh, uh, engaged in that. What's your observation about that, uh, about Notre Dame, what they learned? And, and Shamanah, you know, it's a division. They always are growing in these tournaments, but what do you observe in that game? You know, Coach said they need to be perfect to even compete, and they were nowhere near perfect. They hung for a little while, but I think, uh, you know, Notre Dame just overpowered in the end because they couldn't sustain. A lot of times you watch, you know, I was watching, you know, um, I, I, Shamanah tried. But they they just couldn't they just couldn't um, keep up with Notre Dame, they just couldn't, and I think it was uh, important for Notre Dame to get their groove back in, you know, and try to do their thing, their game, get into rhythm, um, and yeah, it was against Chaminade, but I think it was a good confidence booster for them. Well, you know, we're gonna get into now. We're in day three. This is the final day. And Darnell, man, I, I know you've just been having fun uh, with this. And, you know, Joy, you've been on this run with us. You know, we get to day three. These are long days, but it gets exciting. And things just kind of happen crazy on day three. So what's different about this tournament than most tournaments, and part of it is probably the way when it's usually in Maui, the way it's set up, is that normally uh, in a tournament, the last game in the tournament is the championship game. <laughs> but the way this tournament works, it's actually um, the 2 o'clock game. And then you have a five o'clock and then a um, uh, eight o'clock game after. So you have like two games, I believe, afterwards. So we're going to talk about these in terms of the other games. And then we'll end with the the, the championship game um, as well. So the, the day's going to kick off here a little bit with us, uh, with uh, Houston and Oregon. And this is a really an important thing. You know, Houston falls to the Badgers, you know, kind of after a slow start. Then they have a strong finish, as uh, um, was alluded to by uh, Darnell. Um Obviously, with you know someone like Marcus Sasser who can get buckets, they they got some players. Oregon is continuing to feel like they're finding them. They got some energizers in the low post. Um, they got Eric Williams Jr., who is uh, I would say a smooth, silky guard. I believe he's out of uh, Port Huron, Michigan, number fifty, wearing that uh, Greg Anthony number on it. You know these teams are fighting to see who's going to be two and one. There's a point you can you can walk away from this tournament feeling good. If you can be two and one, you don't want to be one and two. And a, a, a matchup like this is going to mean something during selection time. So uh, I, I want to get a sense, starting with you, Darnell, and going over to Joy, uh, kind of your observations and your predictions uh, for, for this game. 
So this game to me is about um, which team can which team values the ball more, which team can um, avoid falling into the tra- falling into the traps and um, avoid turning the ball over. Because both these teams they they love to press it, and a lot of their defensive identity is to um, force these turnovers and play play in transition. Because both of these teams like. They have a better transition offense than half court offense, which you know everybody does because that's that's basketball. Um, yeah. If the defense is not set, they're not going to um, be able to defend as well as they would if they were set. But um, both these teams, they they really hang their hat on transition offense. So um, which so I think the key to the game is who's going to take care of the ball. And um, you want me to do my prediction now, or, or we're going to do? Yeah, why don't you prediction now? Okay, so my prediction for this game, I think Houston will take it because I think they're going to be upset. I think uh, <laughs> they um, coach is going to give them a good speech. They're going to he's going to um, fire them up going into this game, and they're going to take it personal. I think um, Houston should and will win this game. All right, I think Enjoy. I think um, this is a very important game. Not necessarily for Houston. I mean, kind of, yeah, you know, they were ranked and they got punched in the mouth. But um, Oregon, I think this is a very important game, right? They got busted, false cracked in the mouth from BYU. Can you hear me? They bounced back against Chaminade, which they damn well should. But now your ass got kicked by St. Mary's. So now you better find yourself. You better find yourself fast. So I think this game's more important to Oregon than it is to Houston. Both of them have been completely inconsistent. Houston's first game, they they give a knockout punch, but then they die in the second half, right? Yesterday, they come out slow, and then they fight back. But they end up losing still because they're in such a hole. They, they, it, these two need to find consistency, but I think it's more important for Oregon because they've just been getting busted left and right. And, I mean, ob- it's obvious. Once again, we need to mention Dana Altman was MIA because he felt that bust in the teeth. He must have lost a couple teeth because he didn't show up. He didn't want to talk with the gap in his mouth. <laughs> so are you picking Oregon to win or are you going to pick no, I think Houston gonna pull it out, but I just think it's important. <laughs> so, so, what, so what you say? We we will not see Dana Altman at the presser again today. So we just need to prepare I'm, for that. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're gonna need CSI to find the <laughs> MIA again. <laughs> uh, the next one we're gonna talk about is Butler Shaman. This is the can't go zero and three game. The tough thing about this tournament, you don't want to be the team to go zero and three. And Butler showed some competitive energy in that second half against AM. You know, uh Jared Bolden will need to get off and and carry this team. This team is very fragile right now. Prime for the picking for some team like Shamanad uh right now. Um Shamanad would have to be effective. Um, you know, they got uh is it uh Isaac Amiri, uh uh Arth- Arthur Ree or something like that. I believe that's what his name is. Uh he he uh is he's playing well, but he can't take quick shots. Like Coach said, they got to play within their office. They got to play their balance. They got to play tough on defense. They got to win 50-50 balls. And I think against a team like Butler, they can win some 50-50 balls. Joy, what do you what do you think about this? This is this is this is the host team, you know, uh, you know uh, going up against Butler that is is fragile. Uh, I think Sean and I gonna come out fighting because they know Butler is fragile, mm-hmm. but. I think Butler gonna pull it out. I think gonna pull, I think it'll be maybe a little confidence booster, you know, because they had some fight in them yesterday. Yeah, they had. So you know, Shamanad might be tired, but we'll see. But but I think Butler pull it out. I feel I think Butler pull it out. Might be close, but I think they pull it out. All right, youngin, what do you think? Butler Butler better win this game. And, um, <laughs> I believe they will. He ain't making a prediction. They, they better. <laughs> they better win this game, and um, I believe they will. Um, they're gonna come out. Um, they're gonna come out um, knowing that they're going to, and they're, they they just like anybody else. They want to come out here with a win. I mean, 
especially against Samanad. They, I know Samanad wants to win too, but it's different when you, you know, you're on the skid that you've already been on, and now you're playing against a Division Two team, which you know this team is a scrappy team, a team that that will fight and will give you energy. But at the end of the day, this is a game you know you have to win. And, and, and the X factor too is just the, is the the way they come out. Like, um, does Butler come out with the? Do they give up? You know what I'm saying? Are they going? Is are they a team that's going to lay down and say, you know, um, this tournament did not go as planned, and you know we're just ready to get out of here? Or are they going to say, you know, how can we salvage this, and we're going to end this with a bang? And we got to write this ship. And if they come out and play the way that I know that they can play, uh, they should win, and they should be, um, be able to create some separation. In this game, because just like just like we said for the um, previous Sabana game, I mean, yeah, they fight hard, but at the end of the day, they are a D two team. What and when we're a D two team, you just don't have the depth. That you know, you might be good at a couple spots, but um, if some guys get in foul trouble, you know, what I'm saying so if 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 the if a key guy has an off night, it can go it can go south very quickly, and. Um, if you butler, you cannot lose this game. And that's that's, that's not the case. Yeah, the way to way to go. And you know, Texas AM and Notre Dame will be like the nightcap tonight. Um, this is another one of those games that will mean something in March when you're talking about making selections, looking for victories. Um, this is a game that matters as well, but this is one of those games where you, you want to feel like you can go home feeling good, right? Um and, you know, you, you got Quentin Jackson, who leads the Aggies in scoring. You got Paul Atkinson, Jr., who leads the Fighting Irish in scoring. Uh, they got Henry Coleman, the third. I believe he's a transfer from Virginia Tech. We saw a few years ago um, out here at the tournament, uh, who leads uh, them in rebounding. And they got Nate uh, Lazuski, uh, who, uh, for Notre Dame, who's um, leading them with 11 rebounds a game. So this is a balanced team on both sides. These are well-coached teams. You know, Buzz is going to be out there with the tight suit on with the choreographed bench going on, with the defensive coordinator yelling out stuff, you know, and Bray's going to be over there looking cool, calm, and collected with his guys ready to go. I think this is going to be a good nightcap game for us to end it up. Uh, Joy, you know, what are, you, what are your thoughts about this and your prediction for this game? Which, oh, Texas A&M and uh... – Yeah, Notre Dame versus Texas A&M. Yeah, I think I think I think it'd be a pretty decent game, and I, I think you know, like you said, Tex, uh, Buzz got it going as far as his system and expectations, and I think they're gonna pull it out. I think yeah. they're a little bit more um, tougher yeah. than Notre Dame, and I think they know what they got to do, and Buzz gonna make sure, and they're gonna finish on a high point. Or, or you have to go in the weight room and lift with him. I don't think they want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> or wear his I'm looking shirt. At Buzz. I'm like Buzz, like there's still hope. I'm like, man, I'm about to put it. And he, he looked over his smile, come out with his shirt on. I'm like, Buzz, you're not going to have to talk, man. I'm going to get you on there and talk. And then I'm going to figure out what you're doing. We're going to get on there. I'm going to get Buzz on. We'll get Buzz on. Uh, Darnell. Yeah, well, um, I think I got to take the as well in this game because um, I think they'll be able to um, turn their day over. Um, they're going to be able to play in transition. Athletic is going to be too much, and I think um, Texas A&M is going to um, eventually win this game. All right, and in and, 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 and the championship game, we got nobody really predicted this. Uh, Wisconsin against St. Mary's. Uh, ooh, I think this is going to be a good game. It's not the kind of game that, that ESPN probably wanted for ratings, but it's, it's a good game for those basketball junkies uh, 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 out there. Uh, Darnell, as you look at this game, these two teams – you know, what do you, what, how do you size them up? You know, we got Johnny Davis, a rising star. We got Dan Futa, Futu. Uh, Futu, Daniel Futu. And, oh, uh, look at, and look at quick, Darnell correcting you. Futu. And a, he's got to get in the And the side story, you know why Daniel Futu wears the number 42? It's What's because that? his name is Futu. So he changed, <laughs> he changed the number 42. <laughs> You know, I'm over, here trying, to, I'm, I'm over here trying to work it and look over at the same time. I'm trying to get my whole system together. I was like, and I have been practicing that in my head. It got it out. But thank you, brother. This is what we do. This is why I bring the young in. We got this in the family. So go ahead, brother. So what do you think? Yeah, um, well, 
St. Mary's, they got the system together. They work together like an oil well oiled machine. But um, I think Wisconsin should be able to take this game because they're. I think Wisconsin's a bigger team. Um, they, I think they'll be able to control the glass, and you control the glass, you can control the possessions. I mean, this is um, basketball. It's, it's, it's a lot of it. There's a lot. There's a lot of um, stuff that goes into it, but um, at the end of the day, it does come down to um, possessions, and you know, um, do you value, you know, just making sure you're taking care of the ball and uh, maximizing what you can get out of every possession. I think Wisconsin does that very well. They have the best. I believe they have the best player in this in this game, and I think um, he should be able to take care of, um, take over this game. Even though um, St. Mary's is a very good defensive team, I'll be interested and seeing how they play him and um, what things they could do to, you know, try to slow him down here and there. But um, I think at the end of the day, Wisconsin has enough to um, come up on top in this tournament. I was going to say the same thing, man. St. Mary's got some defense. Mm -hmm. And um, I like to see how Wisconsin responds to that. And if um, they can, like, like Darnell said, still keep Johnny going, you know, um, will they double team him, triple team him? I mean, but you know, St. Mary's is a well-oiled wheel, you know, and um, they're tough. They don't back down, and they just do their thing. I know you're gonna ask me who's gonna win, but I don't know. By the end of the day, yeah, they they can double team, but the end of the day, that uh, that's what Wisconsin wants you to do. Like yeah. they want you to double team because once you once you double team, they can swing, swing, and then you have an open three. I mean, that's what that, I'm saying. So I want to see process, um, what they're going to do, like you said, and and see how St. Mary's responds to that, you know, and see how Wisconsin responds. I, I'm I'm going to make the out of box prediction, you know. I'm going to take St. Mary's. I'm going to say St. Mary's because they're pretty solid and their shooting percentage is through the roof. That is my prediction. Well, I'm going to take St. Mary's. Y'all heard y'all heard the prediction predictions. Now we got to see that the games are going to be played. Uh, this is on the road with RSG at the Maui Invitational. Uh, we want to thank again our, our sponsors of Bowman Medical Group uh, and uh, My Match uh, 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 Development Group for uh, uh, su supporting us as our premier sponsors and also uh, Red Insurance Group as our uh, opening segment sponsor here today. This is Darnell, Devon, and Joy. Uh, we're here doing it again here on RSG. Uh, we'll see you on the, on the other side. Uh, and uh, uh, for the final report for the turn. Hey, yo, Nell. Hey, what's up? I got you. Got you, man. R.P. Grammy. Free my brother. It's free to his backwards.